out one equals out one or with value shifted over uh, four times. So value shifted over four times is zero, 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 uh, one, one, zero, zero. So here's out one, and we're oring it with zero, 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 one, one, zero, zero. And so the result of, so this is an or, the result of this is going to be one, 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 zero, zero. And then um, output two is equal to value. So when we do the shift up here, this does not affect the value of value. It just shifts it over and then does the, the operation. So value is still equal to C3. This is, this, is the, this is the X and this is the Y. So this, this is value currently is C3. Okay. So value on the next line is still equal to C3. And it's and C3, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, and it, logically and, with 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. So we, I hope everybody can see, this is C3, and this is 0F. Right? So when you do the logical and, you get a 1 on the output when there's a 1 on both inputs. So you get a 1 here, a 1 here, and the rest are zeros. Output 2 is now equal to that. So this first line was irrelevant. We need it overwrote output 2. So output 2 is now equal to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. And then the next line says take the value of output 2 and shift it over four times and store it back into output 2. And it's shifting to the left. So all of this stuff is going to shift to the left four times. And you're going to get 0, 0, 1, 1, and zeros are shifted in. So output 2 ends up equaling that. So what you end up with is these are the four uh, config bits for the, uh, for the DAC. These are the, this is the high nibble. This is the low nibble, and these are the don't cares. So output one and output two now have our 16 bits that uh, fall into this register the way we want it to. So we have our four setup bits. So we're all ones, right? So we're writing to. That B, we have the buffered reference, we have one X on our on our gain output selection, and we're active. B out is available. The, the DAC is not shut down. Those are the first four ones. And then the uh, the next eight are our data. D7 through D0. And then the last four don't care. It's like if zero is ones, doesn't matter. Alright. So we've already set the chip select low line. So up at the very top here, we've already set the chip select low. And now we transfer output one, we transfer output two, and set the chip select high. Why not? We've, uh, we've written to the deck. <coughs> All right. In part three, all we're doing is we're taking that DAC code and we're putting it into a new tab. So we're going we're to take out the stack XY and the DAC MCP49XX and we're going to move it into in the DAC init. We're going to move all these DAC functions into another tab and all we're going to end up with in our, in our uh, sketch is just a very simple thing. So what we're doing here is we're, we're hiding the complexity of these functions, right? If we know we call this function and it sets our two DACs, right, we don't care about this complexity, right? We do care. We want it to be right. But, but when we're thinking of a high level, what, what do we want our DACs to do? We don't have to worry about the minutia of setting every bit for every DAC. All we have to do is set the, uh, the channels and 
and this half hour of lecture on how all this stuff works, now you don't have to think about it. You just think about, oh, I want these two values. Right? So all that stuff in part three is going to get put into another tab that we don't even have to look at, right? We, we so want to hide the, that complexity, we don't even want to look at it in our, in our program. And we've done that before. Uh, part four, we actually wire up the DAC. And there's a little chart here that shows um, the PIN number of the DAC, 1 through 14, and what the PIN name is and where it needs to connect to onto the Fuburino. And then it has you modify the main loop. And so instead of transmitting C3 and 55, you're going to transmit two values, X and Y, that every time through the loop are changing. And so we'll be able to look at the DAC outputs on the screen and see a, a little sawtooth wave. And one will be twice the frequency of the other. And part five says, copy all this code here into your, uh, your DAC library. Right? It's a lot of code, a lot of DAC XY locations. And uh, once you do that, uh, you're going to call those functions. Does it say to call that? You add these to the DAC.h. Um, and then uh, change the loop so that it calls one when the program button is pressed, and it calls the other when it's not pressed. So there's two functions. I went by really quick. They're hard to see. One is called mount sack at 74 and the other one is called logic gates. And I think everybody's seen the, the lab where... Uh, it displays the two images. So these are basically just the all the X, Y locations to draw those two images. <clears throat> and then you hook up the oscilloscope in X, Y mode, and you'll be able to, to uh, look at those images on the oscilloscope screen. Next is, it says make your own pattern. 